right. So let's clarify this little intricate wording. Here we go. On Monday and Tuesday, we did two separate chapters. Because one of the chapters on chapter 24 that we did um, was about two groups. You had two separate groups. So then you had two averages. Okay? Average of the men, average of the women, that kind of thing. Two separate groups. Versus what we learned yesterday, which was one group of people or one group of item, and then you first find the difference. They are matched up and you find the difference before, minus, after, or whatever. So yesterday, we were only interested in one list. We were only listed interested in one group and how that group changed, and so we took only one average. Okay, so that's the major thing that you need to, we need to bring to the forefront for you to know that is going on. Okay, so here we go. First thing is this difference, okay, difference of, and I could really say difference of two averages, if you think of it that way. The difference between two averages. Difference between two averages. So this references those two separate averages and two separate groups, men and women, okay, dogs and cats, whatever, are your two separate groups. So first, average the first group. Then, we're going to be talking about the average of all in the second group. And then I want to find the difference between those two averages. That's called the difference of averages. What kind of tests are we performing when we did that on Monday? A hypothesis test for what? Two means. Okay, so you're dealing with those hypothesis tests for two means. All right, versus what we did yesterday. And yesterday, the language is to get an average of differences. And you can think of this as an average of one list of differences. Okay, so this is really an average of one list <coughs> of differences. Okay, because you only get one average. And say it's of the before minus the after, or the Coke minus the Dr. Pepper decay, whatever. So you're getting one average, say, of the after minus the before, or however it is, one average only. So first, you had to find the one list of differences because it was paired data. You only had one group. And so then after you had that one list, you averaged that one list of differences. So when we did this, we actually did a hypothesis test for paired data and when you, the mechanics to it, how did we actually compute that in our calculator? What did we do when we did the hypothesis test for paired data? We did what? Just a T test because it's built off of one sample, whereas this was a two sample T test. Okay? All right, that's it. So now let's just practice a few of these and uh, that's all the clarification for today. Um, for these problems, we're going to read them, and we're going to determine if this is a representation of two separate sets of data, two separate groups, or if this is paired information. If it's paired, I'm only getting one average. Okay. So, for each one of these problems, I want to get the hypothesis test of two averages or the hypothesis test of just one one group of differences for the matched pair, and then, then we'll circle difference of averages or average of differences. Okay, so here we go. Let's read A. An experiment is conducted to determine whether intensive tutoring, which is covering a great deal of material in a fixed amount of time, so say just studying the night before the test, is more effective than paced tutoring, covering less material in the same amount of time, but you know you're doing it over 
you're spreading it out. So, for example, you're only doing numbers 1 through 4 on your review tonight, and then 5 through 10 tomorrow night, and so on, and then the rest over the weekend. I'm pacing you through the review. I'm forcing you to do that because research does show, and really, I mean, I'm being for real here. I have a book on it that that is significantly deeper and better learning than cramming one night before. Okay. But anyway, back to this. So two randomly ch uh, chosen groups are tutored separately and then administered proficiency tests. Here's the significance level of alpha is less than 0.05. All right, let mu1 be the population average for the intensive tutoring group and mu2 be the population average for the paced tutoring group. So what do you have to say about this kind of situation? It's two groups. So therefore, I'm interested in a hypothesis test for two separate averages. So then do I want to do a difference of two averages or an average of one list of differences? Okay. Difference of two averages. Okay, good. Next. Does right or left-handedness affect how fast people type? Random samples of students from a typing class are given a typing speed test and words per minute, and the results are compared. Significance level for this test is 0.1, and because you are looking for a difference between the groups in either direction, right-handed is faster than left or the other way around, this is a two-tailed test. Now, word of warning, tailage has nothing to do with how many averages there are or how many groups there are. All this is saying is that you're going to have, you know, not equal to each other or you're going to have, um, you know, this going on. Okay, it's just saying a not equal to. So this, this last statement here is probably just to throw you off and make you think it's telling you something, but it's really not. All right, so what do you think about this? Is this two separate means, or is it a one mean of matched pairs? It is two separate. Why does it have to be two separate means? Because you got, because can a person go, oh, I'm right-handed today, let me take the test, and then the next day, oh, I'm left-handed today, let me take the test. They have to be two separate groups of people. So, am I going to average one list of differences, or take the difference between two averages? Difference between two averages. Okay, last one I'm going to do with you, and then I'm going to have you do D, E, and F. So a farmer is deciding to try out a new fertilizer on a test plot containing 10 stalks of corn. Before applying the fertilizer, he measures the heights of those stalks, those 10 stalks that he puts in that plot. Two weeks later, he measures those same stalks again. And then he's careful to match each stock's new height with his previous one, so you just are interested in um, what's going on there. The stocks would have grown an average of six inches during that time, even without fertilizer. So do we have significant evidence that the fertilizer helped? Okay, what's going on here? We do have matched data, okay? Because maybe he numbers the stocks. One, two, three, whatever, all the way he had 10. And then he measures before two weeks. He measures at the end of two weeks. And he, we want this number here. He takes stock number two. It was a lot little. It was a little wimpy one. And then so it was smaller. But then later we measured its growth. And they're just comparing itself. Get that difference. I am only interested. I don't care what this is here. I just want to know about this one average one list. Um, okay, so that is the average of one list of differences. Now, hey, I actually wanted to show you something kind of unrelated to this. Um, when you did, when, when you would do, say, your um, after minus before, your null hypothesis is actually not equals zero. What would the null hypothesis, oops, what would the null hypothesis on this one be? The expected growth, the expected growth was what? Six. So you got to watch out for that. See, this one, they gave you 
an expected difference that was anticipated. So be aware that it's not always equals zero. Most of the time it is. Um, but, you know, it's, it's it referencing what it's expected to be, what difference it's expected. Okay, so I want you to do D, E, and F, and then I'll come, I'm going to come stamp you while you're doing D, E, and F, and then we'll uh, conclude with those answers. Okay. See how you did. Okay, D has, uh, obviously these things are going to be, I'm going to be interested in what? The only line I'm interested in is this, oopsie, that's not true. I'm interested in the differences. Once I get this list of differences, I technically have no care in the world for any of this stuff right here. All I care about is these numbers that are the differences. I only care about one mean of the differences. So I average of the list of differences. Okay, here were men and women. So that is half to be a, an average for the men and an average for the women. So this has to be a difference of two averages. So you have two means. And then your last one uh, was a before and after of the same person, so that's obviously matching. So I average the one list of differences. Okay, that's it. Now, um, let's look real quickly at just one of the problems from last night. Well, I don't know. Let's let's look at last night's homework really quickly. Okay, because I think a lot of the first two you were fine with. Okay. And I'm going to go more in detail on this. Probably I'll have some time on Monday. But um, so one, hopefully you set this up it was a matched pair. You had a, one sample t-test for paired data and so on. You ended up rejecting and you had significant evidence of an average difference. Okay. And this one was also straightforward. Um, did anybody else kind of, did this throw you off? I really, I kind of uh, struggled at first with this one, wondering is it really paired data or is it supposed to be two separate things. I'm supposed to average the name brand and then average the generic. Okay, so that was a concern for me. I didn't know if I was supposed to average the name brand and then average the generic and then compare those. But you actually, a lot of people did this when this was an actual AP test question. So if you did this problem with two separate averages, you the maximum you could have gotten was a three out of four points on this, but if you had done everything correctly with this wrong way, with this wrong method, uh, you would have just lost that one point if everything else was correct, okay? But what happens is this. See this? Because the pharmacies may store their drugs under different conditions, they were <laughs> intending you to not compare a different pharmacy to a different pharmacy. Because maybe these were kept in the heat, and these, you know, were kept in refrigeration. Okay, so I had a lot more when it started. So they wanted this to be paired and not compare a different pharmacy to a different pharmacy. So they wanted to do the pairs against the pairs. All right. So anyway, that was that. You rejected, and it was about the average difference. Um, so there you go. So, so I do have evidence to conclude that there is indeed a difference. Ah, how about there is indeed an average difference in the active ingredient in the two uh, brands of pills. I think I usually try to do this. I kind of said the difference in the active ingredients in the two brands of pills. I kind of word it straight from here. That's always safe if you're wording it straight from the way they word it in their problem. Okay, this is the one that threw everybody. On the AP test, to, even though there wasn't very much room on part A, I think it probably would have given you, like, they, they, this was probably condensed just for copying it in class. Um, the 
AP would have given you more room because to get full credit on this, you had to have a full phantoms for part A. Okay, meaning parameters, hypothesis statements, conditions. Luckily, I didn't have to draw histograms and so on. This was a two, and so these were two separate groups. This was an average um, mental skill score for the kids that did the walker and an average mental skill score for the kids that did not use the walker. Two separate groups of kids, right? Two separate groups of kids. So I threw this one in here to see if you caught that it was like Monday's material. Two separate groups. So I have two averages. But I'm comparing uh, two sample t-tests for means, okay? So your t-value is negative 3.85 with a small, small p-value. So I reject, do list your degrees of freedom, with which the calculator gives you. So I rejected, and look, I didn't have room to do my conclusion, so I had to come down here and do it. And then I'll talk about b in a second. So since the p-value is low, I rejected that the average mental skills of all such babies who use Walker is the same as the average mental skill score of all such babies that do not use the walker. And then I went up and made sure I answered the question. I pretty much almost went verbatim from this right here. There is evidence to suggest that the average mental skill of babies who were da 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 da, I pretty much went verbatim from the question. Use that, it's there for you. You can make sure you get it right if you uh, are using their wording in, in there. So I did that. There is evidence that the average mean, mental skill of the babies who use a walker is different from the, that. The, okay, now, here's what part B was going at. And this is from like the second week of school. So you probably didn't catch this, but here's what it was going for. Or you may not have. If you did, fantastic, okay? Um, the issue was honing in on, could you say that the walker is causing the increased or the decreased or whatever mental, the different mental score? And you cannot say causes unless you have a controlled experiment. Okay. So this is not a controlled experiment. I had to just observe the babies. I couldn't say. You can't do this and you can't do that. And I'm going to make you have a walker and I'm not going to make you have a walker. Okay, they just um, observed their things. So, no, since this was an observational study, we could only have an association between the walker and the mental skill score of all such babies. You could only do causation if you had a controlled experiment, which this was not described as that. Okay, today. Now, back to here. Lots of uh, questions on these two. Okay, you have, you, you, this is AP stuff. You have to be getting this. The only thing different about this is AP probably actually would have had five multiple choices instead of just three. Okay, so here we go. Um, the AP test, multiple choice, there's 40 questions. Free response, there's six questions, and you have 90 minutes for each. Okay, so you take the multiple choice in 90 minutes, they take that up, give you a 10-minute break, and then they give you the six free response, and you do whatever you want with that in 90 minutes, and then you're done. Okay? Uh, just for juniors. Okay. All right, so here, this is paired, guys. This student's first score and second score. So I am only interested in this difference. I'm only interested in that one list. So I put these into L1 and calculated the one variable stats. I could have also done L1, L2, and L3. Okay, I could have done that also. But I wanted to find the mean of this sample's differences the standard deviation of this sample's differences, and of course the degrees of freedom is three since the sample size is four. So, in order to get this stuff right here, see they all had 25. The reason they all had 25 is because the average was 25. The average of that sample was 25. The rest of the interval comes from, here's why I make you do it by hand, because you have to know to 
we get the T score, you're doing inverse T of one tail comma degrees of freedom. So you had to compute the T score. It was negative 3.182. So I put that in here. And then the standard deviation was here that I got from my one variable stats, 40.4 divided by the square root of N. So look at this. This is the piece that allowed you to get this problem correct or not correct. You had to know how to do this margin of error. And it became, I got one decimal off, one one hundredth off, but it was clearly that one. Okay. All right. And then, mean me, ha, 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 ha. I threw in a proportion problem that was all the way back to Z scores. Okay? Because, come on, we, I've got to start putting you into this, getting everything together, mind frame. And so, uh, why, question, why is this probability 0.25? for the null hypothesis? Yep, because one out of four symbols, that's why the null hypothesis is 0.25. And we wanted to see if this person could it detect, because they had ESP, more than 25%. So the P hat, the sample that was achieved was 120 out of 400, so I got a Z score. I did my P hat minus my P, and you had to do the standard deviation of a proportion sampling distribution was P, 1 minus P over N. So then I norm CDF'd that thing from this Z score, 2.309. Remember, here I am. This person got this sample right here at 2.309. So norm CDF that out to infinity to get this P value which was 0.0101. Oh, actually 05 I got, but there's probably some rounding things there. Because I think I actually kept all my decimals and never changed them. All right, ta-da, that's that, going over that. Okay, so you have a solid 20 minutes to be working on this warm-up, okay? I want the, you doing this warm-up. And uh, I'm going to come around checking you and answering any questions that you have to make sure you're clear on stuff for tomorrow's quiz.